One fall day in 1940, we knew Britain was impregnable, protected by the sea, and defended by brave souls on every clifftop. 24 hours later, all we could do was watch as the German forces took the coast and drove their tanks into the heart of the nation. When the blockade began in 1948, we thought the people of West Berlin would be safe. But the Soviets had other ideas. One December day is all it took for the fragile peace to shatter. And once again, the streets were filled with war and death. In 1962, we thought the Cuban Missile Crisis was a bluff. It was bravado, playground bullies flexing their muscles. No one would ever push the button. Then one day in October that year, someone did push it. An island paradise was turned into the epicenter of all-out thermonuclear war, threatening our very existence. These are our stories. Now, it's your turn. Every American tank built was destined for the U.S. Army. Some were transported through the Persian Corridor into the Soviet Union. From the steelworks of Detroit, straight to the Eastern Front. And it wasn't just tanks that wound up in the Soviet Union. The Americans sent experienced combatants too. Colonel Peters had joined the Soviet advance into Romania. With the news spreading that a second front had opened up in France, both sides knew this was a critical turning point in the war. on the hill, Peters and his Soviet crew were about to get their first taste of action as a joint force. The Germans had launched a preemptive strike on the Russian armor.
Peters knew if he didn't keep his shooting moving, he'd end up a burning wreck. The German tanks routed, Peters looked at his Sherman crew with pride. They had passed their first test admirably. Ready to fire. Great job, men. 